Our gospel lesson comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus is speaking, and he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I bought this pansy this week because it is ready to be planted into the ground. And it will look beautiful, um, but the thing I know, which is very little about gardening, but what I do know is that uh, in order for it to do better later in the summer, I have to take off these flowers now because pruning it now will make it grow more full and produce more flowers later in the summer. It seems very counterintuitive to me. Grapevines are kind of like this pansy. They need to be pruned every year. Old branches wither and die, and they have to get cut off. And the new branches grow, and they have to be trained. And as you move farther, as the branches grow farther away from that vine, they receive fewer nutrients. And I learned the fruit farther away from the vine has less flavor. And the farther away you go, the fewer grapes are produced, and the less healthy that fruit will be. Bearing fruit is the purpose of the grapevines. Think about it. People don't plant vineyards and then spend all of that time and energy just so they can look at the pretty plants. And we know that. That makes sense to us. But this metaphor of a vineyard uh, would have really stood out for the original hearers of this text. Vineyards were very important. They were central to family life. Generation after generation of a family tended the same vineyard. Think about the story of Naboth from 1 Kings. He had a vineyard, and it was a little too close to King Ahab's land. And King Ahab said, I want that. So he went to Naboth and said, I want to buy your land. You can, I'll give you a different vineyard. And Naboth said, no. Why would he sell the land and this vineyard that had been in his family for generations? That was his livelihood. So Ahab went home depressed. Then his wife Jezebel comes in and sees him acting all depressed and says, Are you king or not? I'll take care of this. So she had Naboth killed, and they took the vineyard, thereby ending the the livelihood for all of Naboth's family. They couldn't care for themselves anymore without a vineyard. Vineyards were so important to their culture that even a vineyard became the symbol for Israel. And if you look carefully, you can see many references 
to vineyards and vines and grapes throughout the Jewish scripture. But we're not reading from the Old Testament today. We're reading from John's gospel. And instead of being a symbol for Israel, the vine and the vine grower and the branches are symbols of the relationship between God and Christ and us. We're so used to hearing, I am the vine and you are the branches, that that's what our brain hears when we read the first verse. But that's not what it says. The first verse says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. Vine growers are the caretakers of the vines. They water and fertilize and prune the vines to keep them healthy. And grapevines require a great deal of care to be fruitful. The word that you heard the most this morning in our, our, gospel, our both readings, our scripture readings, was abide. Jeannie read it and I read it. In this eight verses that I read, the word abide shows up nine times. That should make you pay attention. You could translate it as remain or reside as well. It signifies deep attachment and loyalty. The branches are to abide in the vine. We are to reside with deep attachment to Christ. The closer, the better. Bear fruit also shows up six times in this passage. The purpose of those branches is to bear fruit, and the way we bear fruit is to abide as closely as possible to the vine. So the real question then is, what does it look like for us as a congregation to abide in Christ? One way we're trying to answer that question is, last week there was an insert that looked like this in your bulletin. There are more of these back at the back table. If you haven't filled one out, please take one and do. It asks the questions, what ministry brings you joy? And what ministry sucks your joy? And what ideas energize you? Because the place, what well, Frederick Beekner says, the place, oh, I better read it correctly. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. The fruit of our love and our ministry feeds our joy and the world's deep need. Remember, branches don't live off of their own fruit. That fruit is produced for another. So for us, for everyone, abiding in Christ looks like focusing on what the love of Christ calls us to do and stepping out in faith to grow and change and bear fruit. For a couple of years, I have been hearing from some of you about people who would like to host a summer lunch program for anybody who's hungry, especially for kids. School ends at the end of May, and then there's a month of summer school. But for all of July and the first two weeks of August, there is no school lunch for those kids. And people are asking one another, why don't we serve lunch here? In the summer. If that is something that excites you, write it on this paper or tell me or tell an elder, tell someone, and we'll see if we can get that going as some ministry that excites us, that helps us to abide in Christ. Or maybe for our congregation, abiding in Christ looks like gathering to knit or crochet. I don't know the difference. Something warm for our houseless neighbors. <laughs> and, and I have been told that if you have no clue, they will teach you. The first gathering is on Monday, May 7th, a week from tomorrow at 7, and everybody is welcome. And I've also been told that scarves are really easy. We'll see. It could be that abiding in Christ for us looks like working to make 
a summer day camp a success. Or maybe it looks like cleaning up our park and our grounds so that our neighbors and our community have a safe place to gather. Or maybe abiding in Christ looks like attending a conversation about race or poverty and educating yourself. Editor of the Presbyterian Outlook, Jill Duffield, reminds us, if our actions keep us comfortable and safe, we can be sure our branches, sooner or later, will be barren and dead, only useful as fuel for the fire. Only in taking the risks that love demands will we bear good fruit. Remember, branches can't force themselves to bear fruit. It just happens. Because the vine is true, and the vine grower is good. Pruning happens to all of the branches, good and bad alike. When a healthy plant gets pruned, it becomes even healthier. Think about how later this summer this pansy will be covered in beautiful flowers. Our goal isn't to avoid pruning. Our goal is to abide with Christ and to bear fruit. May it be so. Amen.